welcome to Calvin's Got Game. I'm Calvin. I'm Kelly. And I'm Josh. We're giving you our top 10 favorite games of all time. This is our five to number one. So if you haven't seen our 10 to six, go check it out. I'll put it in the description below. So uh, we kind of gave you how we made our list last time, but I'll go ahead and repeat it on this one too. Um, I just took about 25 games that I love to play. I narrowed it down to 10 uh, that I would play anytime with anybody, pretty much anywhere. So that's how I made my top 10. And then since I'm a new gamer, I took my core four or five list and then went back through for the past year and just really narrowed down which games I had fun playing and would play again. So just really easy process. Yeah, and I just kind of went through all my games that I own and kind of picked out. There was about like 20 really that I had and just narrowed it down to the top 10. And it was, it took me a while. I, my list was the last one made, so. <laughs> and in the last uh, video we talked about, or I talked about, if I get four of their top 10 right, uh, I would consider myself a winner. Right now I'm not doing so good. I have one each of them on my list, <laughs> what I thought they'd put on their list. So it's looking pretty rough, um, but you know, we'll see. I think Josh has done pretty better with Kelly's list. And yeah. Kelly's done pretty good with Josh's list. Oh, I think I've got one, one each. for each. One okay. for each. I got one for each as well. And Josh has done the best. Yeah, so I've got one for Calvin and three for Kelly so far. <laughs> so, yeah. But when we get to the number ones, we're going to we're gonna tell you what we think their number one is and see if we're right. Okay. How's that? That sounds good. All right. Josh, you want to start us off? Number okay, six. See. Number five, right? I yeah. mean, number five. Okay. Uh, okay. So this one's a kind of a cheat, because it kind of includes three games, but I mean, I couldn't pick which one I like the most. It's a, uh, it's a, a tile, tile play game. It's a, yes, it's a tile <laughs> game. I think you might know what it is. It is Azul. Azul, oh, hello. Goodness, yeah. yeah, I remember yeah. playing the first one, Azul, and so it's a tile play, it's a tile drafting game, I guess. Um, you well, draft you play tiles. Some, yeah, yeah, you yeah. draft tiles and you play some, and yeah, it's a beautiful game. Beautiful production. The tiles are so nice. They look like candy. They're not candy. No. <laughs> um, Keep yeah, them away from children. There was and then Azul the stained sun. glass. Of oh, the Sintra. Yeah, came out. That one, that's good. And then finally Summer Pavilion. Yeah. Which I think I might like the best, but I don't really I should know. say, how, how, how would you rank those three games? If you had to say, out of those three Azul games, which one's your favorite and your least favorite? I think my least favorite is the stained glass. And then mm -hmm. the most is Summer Pavilion. Okay. I've only played that one once though, but it's more it's more forgiving, I think, than yeah. the first one mm. when you like overdraft tiles or can't place your tiles. Yeah. Right. So you don't get as many negative points. True, true. You have right. somewhere else to put the tiles. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then you can uh oh man, I forget. But yeah. I like the Okay. Summer Pavilion one the best. And that's my number five. five. Three yep. games in one. How would you rank the Azul series? Have you played them all three? Yes, I have. Um, Summer Pavilion is definitely my favorite. Um, and then I want to say Stained Glass is my second favorite. Just because... Wow. Yeah, just because um, the first one had this amazing premise. And then they just switched it up. Um, which is really nice in a sequel. You have the same kind of concept, but they changed it up. And then I, I really enjoy Summer Pavilion. I, like Josh said, it's very forgiving. Mm. Well, I think I'm probably more on the line with Josh on this one, but I do like the old classic Azul Best. Mm -hmm. I'm an old guy, I like classics, what can I say? Uh, but I like Azul Best and then probably Summer Pavilion and Stained Glass of Century. I, I, it just didn't make it for me. I don't know mm -hmm. what it was. Now, have you ever played Azul with like the side that's not colored in? Yes, I have. And it's difficult. Yeah, I've never played that way. But I like it. I've never played that way. Yeah. But. And I also bought the expansion for Azul, uh, the mosaic expansion, which has the little plastic cover. Love them. Uh, they work great. They so, stop the cards from they sliding. Do. They stop all the little yeah. tiles from moving around. It's a great purchase if you're looking for something like that. Anyway, number five, Kelly. Number five. Okay. Let me get my list. I'm going to hit this one, too. Here we Pretty go. Pretty sure? <laughs> Pretty sure. Got it. It's Cockroach Poker. Oh, my goodness. Look. <laughs> look. I, I marked it out. I marked it out. You got to be uh, kidding me. I love Cockroach Poker just because it's so crazy. It's so hectic. You can play it with a couple people. You can play it with a large group. And you're just trading cards. You're lying about them. You're trying to bluff everyone. And you're really just trying to read the room and guess what's going on. 
absolutely love this game. Um, I have to thank Calvin so much for buying it and then bringing it. It's just every time it's, we are always laughing at the end and I can't talk about how much I enjoy this game enough. I just love it. It is yeah. pretty fun yeah. and it's simple. That's the yeah. whole key. Yes. Yeah, I love one. That one time Eric was like, this is a... Uh, yeah, you, know, a yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> you can't fall asleep in this game. Yeah. No. Uh, I've, I've made the mistake of all the frogs being on the table and going, mm -hmm. it's a frog. And they're like, there ain't no, <laughs> no more frogs, buddy. You know, so you really have to pay attention to what you're lying about or mm -hmm. telling the truth about. Because they can catch you if you're telling the truth. You may have to keep the card. So mm -hmm. it yeah. is a, it's, it's a really reading the person that's giving you the card. Uh, and if you had the option mm -hmm. to look at it, pass it to someone else. Pretty, pretty cool game. Yeah. I, I, mean, I had it. I did not expect. I had it on her list, and I marked it out just before we started uh -huh. to put on another game. Yeah, right. but ah. yeah, uh, I I think I like it too because it's such it's a it's kind of like a family game. It's kind of easy to learn the rules, and I'm I'm a big risk taker. So at the end, I'll have one of every type of creator critter and creature in front of me. But I think that just makes it more fun. <laughs> Cockroach Poker is a lot of fun. Man, if you like lying, this game's for you. Uh, and if you can read people, if you can read people bluffing, this game's for you. I really enjoy yeah. it. It's a great game. And it's a little card game. Wasn't that expensive? No. Pretty yeah. good. Although you want to sleeve them because if you don't, they get tore up pretty quick. But anyway, my number five, which I think you guys won't know, uh, is Eldritch Horror. Oh. <clears throat> Another one that you need to bring out yeah. so you can play it. Eldritch Horror, uh, I, I, you know, I loved Arkham Horror uh, for a long time, uh, but Arkham Horror was just so big and so long. Um, Eldritch Horror is still a little bit long, but it gives you all the aspect of, of Arkham Horror that it's quicker, it's crisper, you, you, it's just such a beautiful game on the table. The artwork's great, and you're all working together as a cooperative game to kill off one of the old ones. Mm -hmm. And I just, I like the game so much, and I actually get my wife to play it, so that makes it even better. Well, it's more so, streamlined than Arkham Horror, right? It is more streamlined. It's much more streamlined, because Arkham Horror was just all over the place. In Arkham Horror, you're, I have Arkham Horror, but you're yeah. in Arkham. Yes. But on Eldritch, you're going around the world. You're going around the world, and, 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 and you're not going to the outer world thing like you do in Arkham Horror, which was weird to me. All right. Um, I mean, I guess it's possible to go out there, the other world, or whatever they called it. And then they made the, the third edition of Arkham oh, Horror, yeah. and it's supposed to streamline a little more, but if you're looking for one, Eldritch Horror is it. Don't even worry about that. Plenty <laughs> of expansions, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. Man, mm -hmm. they got plenty to do. So that was my number five, Eldritch Horror. Okay. Number four. What is my number four? Okay. So now, this is... Okay, so this is a... I don't even know. I got this one too. Go yeah, ahead. you probably do have it because this is a. It's from my favorite company. There it is. <laughs> hey, it's can we a, say the favorite company? Go ahead, yeah, Stone Mar. Stone Mar Games. <laughs> uh, and okay, so the game is Scythe. All right. Got yeah, it. I knew you. I see. I knew when I got to my top five. You oh, hey, I'm gonna nail them. This. I love the theme of this game. When I saw the artwork, I was like, okay, this game looks cool. It's like, what is it? 1950s. Or, I don't. 20s? Uh, maybe the 20s. It's somewhere late, yeah. Yeah, but it's in 20s? like Russia. Yeah. You got you got mechs and like you know and you got all these you got you know these different factions and you, you're trying to control the board kind of and like place your stars out and it, I really like the game mats because they're double layered. So uh -huh. like when you move your cubes, you move them from right. the top to the bottom and it unlocks more uh, benefits. So when you right. take that action, you get an extra coin or whatever. It might right. Be. Right. Mm -hmm. Or you draw just, a card or something, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. It's a really beautiful game. I don't think Kelly's played it. No, I haven't. So, uh, we'll have to play that sometime. I yep. enjoyed the game. And I, I, I actually own it. And I enjoy the game. Of course, I think Josh has all the extra bits. <laughs> uh, I may have some upgraded coins, you know. Yeah, very nice. Uh, <laughs> but but I, I'm not... It, it, this game is not about warring each other. No. It, I mean, you, you can, can attack people. But, but it's, it's not all about, about that. Or control and like you know, right. resources, gathering resources. And, and, yeah. and for me, I'm not that great all the time at thinking that far ahead. I don't want to have to think five mm -hmm. moves ahead. I just want to think for the moment. What am I doing <laughs> in the moment? <laughs> so uh, I like Scythe, don't get me wrong, but it's probably, I don't think it'll ever be in my top mm -hmm. ten. I, I like don't. that your board 
tells you what things you can do, right? So it's split into right. five sections or four or whatever, and you can't take the same action twice in a row because you got to move your little yeah. pawn. Right. Mm -hmm. And in, in some factions can, can do things that other factions can't. They can yes. cross the whatever river or whatever river. at some point. Yeah. Um, but, and then you need to put these mechs out. It, it's a cool game, and the pieces are phenomenal. Yeah, it's a beautiful mm -hmm. production. Uh, but uh, I just don't think it'll ever be on my top. Now, it might make my top 50 for sure. Oh, okay. Top for 50. sure. Yeah. <laughs> Not 25, but top 50 for sure. That was your number that four? That was number, my number four. So okay. I, All right. My number four, you both will get this. Uh, it's a Secret Hitler. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yep. absolutely. That was um, all over that one. Yep. The, probably the second board game I purchased whenever I started building my collection. Um, and it's just one of those games where you can just play with, uh, I think you start at five players and it goes all the way up to ten. It's mm -hmm. one of those big party games. It's got the hidden roles. It's got different elements. You've got a six through or five through six player board, a seven through eight player board, and a nine through ten player board that does different things um, and locks different abilities as you go on. So just a great party game. Um, I love it and uh, I always bring it out whenever we're having a big group of people because it's just super easy to get into. Um, it's I think a 10 minute game, 10 to 15 minute game. Um, just something really good for a big party. It's got that similar feel to the resistance a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a little bit. A little, There's yeah. a little more, a little more um, involved, I think, than, than the resistance. Mm -hmm. yeah. Little. Yeah, there is, but yeah, I, I do like Secret oh, Hitler. It is a lot of fun. The first time I played it, I was like, okay, this is just all right. Yeah. But I guess maybe it depends on the group you play with. Yeah. True. And, and I think some people get turned off by the name of the game. Yeah. Right. By the name of the game, but it, it's a great game for yeah. sure. And I can use, I'm pretty good at easy calling out who's Hitler. <laughs> um, I, I call him out early and then mm -hmm. people know. Yeah. Josh. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. always Hitler or yeah. whatever. You, know. you are I'm the spy. Yeah, yeah, you're the spy. You're whatever's bad, trust me. So that was your number four. Four. Mm -hmm. Secret Hitler. I, I had that one. I, I did that one right. Well, you know. Well, my number four has a traitor aspect as well. Okay. Has zombies. Yep, I, yep. Okay. I this was on your list. And it's Dead of Winter. Oh, right. I got that one. Dead of Winter is a fabulous game. It's cooperative, except for that traitor. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to play with the traitor, right? Well, you don't have to. You can play it fully cooperatively, but why would you fun. not? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so you're going to these locations, trying to collect things to help your colony. Mm -hmm. You roll dice every time you leave. If you get bitten, you're dead. And if there's other people there with you, the people with the lowest initiative or lowest whatever um, mm -hmm. mental, or whatever it is, uh, it goes to them. They're infected mm -hmm. now. So they either choose to die and stop it mm -hmm. before it destroys the whole colony, <laughs> or they roll the dice and take their chances, and mm -hmm. they still could die. Mm -hmm. So And then it passes to the next person that there. The only person it can't pass to is the dog. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if you got Sparky the Wonder Dog, you're in good mm -hmm. shape, but... Um, you got to feed the colony. If you're at the colony, you got to feed whoever's there. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a, I don't know, man. I love the game. Yeah. And there's so many different yeah. scenarios. Yeah, and yeah. the crossroad cards, when you, oh. those yeah. are so good, too, because, you know, you might trigger it. It's like some, you know, Calvin's Calvin's trying to look at it. Oh, is he going to trigger this card? Right, right. Is Maybe he going to move this turn? Because some of them say if they move this turn or yeah. if they have a person in the colony trigger this card, fabulous system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you get a card and you're like, oh, well. If I do this, three more people come to the colony, and then you're like, oh, we gotta feed those people. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> food is scarce, let me tell you. And then, yes. you know, you're putting in cards face down, so you don't know who's putting right, in cards. Right, right. Mm -hmm. You're trying to accomplish it's like, this. is two food, and you're like, well, food. I'm sure. <laughs> well, you may not have to have food on some of the tragedies of the mm -hmm. day. Right. You, you may have gas. to have gas, you may have to have junk, you yeah. may have to have water, medicine. Medicine. Yeah. And medicine is hard to come by. And I don't know about y'all. But the top of the cards at the locations that say what they're supposed to have in them, I don't think they're true. <laughs> I don't because you could go to the yes. hospital and Never I find swear, medicine, right? yeah. There's very few medicine in there. It says it's supposed to have the most in it, and yeah. I'm like, this is just crazy. You just shuffle through those cards, just keep trying yeah. to get that one card that you need, uh, and of course the traitor is ruining everything. Yeah. So it's a fabulous game. Mm -hmm. I like Dead of Winter. It's probably yeah, it's like the top ten. Yeah. So yeah. It's my number four. number four. You know, it's a great game. So, uh, anybody else have any comments on Dead Winter? 
You they played it? Yeah, I did. Um, I played it with you guys, I think. Yeah. yeah I think um, and I think we had a couple more people play it as well. So I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, it's not on my top ten. That's not Spoil my top alert! Either. But well, uh, it would probably make my top fifty. No, oh, yeah, Same, for sure. Probably for sure. And now, have you played? Like the sequel or anything? I didn't like the long night. I tried it. It was just a little more complicated, and I was mm -hmm. like, yeah, I just like yeah. the regular Dead of Winter. Okay. I'm good yeah. with that. I haven't played it, but yeah. Okay. We're on number three now. Three. Yeah. Number three. Okay. My number three, another Stonemeyer game. I knew this too. This one is a beautiful, beautiful game. I played this the first time also. Yes. I played it at BGG Con last spring. It is Wingspan. Okay. Um, have that uh, one. You both have it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh yeah, please. It's it's just it's a fun. It's like it's not no stress involved. Mm -hmm. It's so calm to play. You're just playing birds and getting eggs and you know scoring yeah. points. Like it's yeah. and it's a beautiful game. It has a mm -hmm. cool you know birdhouse mm -hmm. feeder or mm -hmm. dice tower for your dice. And Doesn't but, it have like a one player aspect as well? So you don't have to play with a a group. Yeah, I think it does. I've never played the one player version, mm -hmm. yeah. but I mean, a lot of most Stonemire games now have been mm -hmm. well, single Scythe, player. Even Scythe has a single mm -hmm. player mode. So. But uh, yeah, beautiful artwork. Be all the birds like have little facts on them. And it's really yes. cool. It's, uh, it's a pretty game. I mean, you know, birds. <laughs> it just <doesn't laughs> yeah, it's, not, it's not a thing that everybody's going to like. Yeah, it's it, a weird theme, I guess. I enjoy it. I enjoy it a lot. Um, I like I like the facts on the cards too. It's just beautiful artwork. Um, well, I think it's a great game. I, yeah. I'm not dissing it. I like the little eggs. Um, I think it's a pretty game. Component-wise, it's really great, oh, as yeah. most Stone Mark games are. Uh, <laughs> um, Erica loves this game. Yeah. She calls it the bird game. The bird I'm game. like, it's Wingspan. She's like, no, it's the bird game. Okay, okay. But now, if the birds were zombie birds or something <laughs> like that, I think I'd be more into it, I'm just saying. <laughs> Yeah. There was a horror aspect. That's to right. The game. If it was like, you know, these yeah. birds went demented or something. Yeah. Yeah. I knew yeah. this would not be on your list. <laughs> <laughs> I like the game and I'll play it. Yeah. I don't have a problem playing it. I like the game. And I'm a I like Stonemeyer games. They're mm -hmm. they're very nice. Um but I just it's it's not it's not in my wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. so not for my top team. Kelly liked it too. Yeah, yeah. I, I enjoyed it a lot. I'll play so. it. I'll play it. It's not that I won't play it, but mm -hmm. All right, so it's my number three, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. They're both going to get this. I think they're going to think it's higher on my list than it is. It's the Search for Planet oh, X. I got that one for you. I, I yeah. got it, but... Yeah. Um, I didn't know, I know what one. The, yeah, now I know what <laughs> one has to be. But. You, you say that, but um, it was the first game I ever backed on Kickstarter. And I followed the whole process. I think someone tweeted it out, and I looked into the board game, and I followed it from start to finish um, production-wise. I got completely into it. Um, it's just a beautiful, phenomenal game. Uh, I think it's on your uh, Clue games, Clue Light games, too. It is. Yeah. It is on my, on my video for people who like Clue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My, my brother will play it with me. And... Um, it's got this uh, concept of you're just trying to work out, it's all logic based. There's no, um, if you can follow the logic and if you can figure out kind of the math of what's going on, you can get to the end and win. Um, and there's supposed to be an element of, uh, if you don't necessarily find where Planet X is, you can also win, but you get a lot of points for finding Planet X. So I enjoy it, I enjoyed it. Lots. Well, here's a problem. It's another logic game, which I'm yeah, not good no. at. I'm not good at logic games. Sorry. I, I don't want to <laughs> think five moves ahead or four, or if... You yeah. want to roll dice and attack people. I do. Yeah. I want to roll <laughs> dice and kill zombies. That's what I want. There's always just this aspect of when you, when you figure it out and when you look down at your card and you've, you've got it and you're just like, man, I'm about to ruin everyone's day because I found Planet X. And she always finds Planet <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I'm pretty good at it, but... Um, hide and seek and logic. Hide and seek, no. logic, and hidden uh, traitors. Mm -hmm. I like this game, too, but it didn't make my list. But I really yeah. do like this game. Uh, it uses I, an app. Yeah, yes. I enjoyed playing it. Which it, is really cool. It wasn't, mm -hmm. it wasn't a bad game. It's just that I'm not good at yes. it. Yes. And that frustrates me when I'm not good at a game. Right. Yes. And I felt lost the whole time. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. I don't understand what I'm doing here. Yeah. Although I was close to where yeah, Planet X was, 
I just it, it, I felt lost through most mm -hmm. of the game, like you did for one game. Yes, uh, I'm not a big fan of resource management. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, I, I I really enjoy this game. It's got beautiful pieces, and mm -hmm. then I have the upgraded pieces as well. So there are uh, clay tokens instead of just the um, the normal cardboard. So absolutely beautiful. Yeah, game. and you each play a different. Uh, Observatory, right? Yes, Which is really um, cool. they're all based on real observatories. Um, they've got facts. I think eventually they're going to add in on the app music and different facts. Um, I think they're still upgrading it and evolving it because it just came out. But whenever I see it in the stores, I always just have to <laughs> smile because I helped back that game and it's mm -hmm. top three. Nice, nice game, nice pick. Well, I thought that was going to be number one. Yes. Honest, I did but. not. I did not. I had a different <laughs> number one. Uh, I, I, there's two possible I think your number one is, but I went with, <laughs> I went with a different one. All right. Um, my number three mm -hmm. is uh, a deck building game. Okay. That's yeah. that. I, I got it's this. It's horror themed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's called Dark Gothic. Yep. yep. Uh, a Touch of Evil Dark Gothic. Um, I actually own the, the Touch of Evil game as well, but this is a Touch of Evil Dark Gothic deck building game. Um, it is by um, Flying Frog, which mm -hmm. I love their artwork. Everybody kind of disses their pictures, but it takes a lot of work to make those pictures, folks. Uh, they have lighting, fog machines, and right. actors mm -hmm. yeah. that do these. So it, I, I appreciate their effort. And so, but in this game, you are you can play competitive. Mm -hmm. in, in a lot of Flying Frog games, you can do that, uh, competitive or cooperative. So I usually play cooperative with my wife. She enjoys this game. Uh, that's why it's in my top 10, because she likes it so mm -hmm. much, so I get to play it a lot. Uh, and I love it. And so you try to build a deck of cards, and you have three different resources. You have a red, blue, and a, and a green. I know they're called something else. One's attack, spirit, and... Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. Anyway. So you're trying to kill these these bog fiends and vampires and stuff, mm -hmm. and you have All these minions monsters. that are coming out. Yeah. yeah. But you have three big ones that you have to kill to win the game uh, before you get 10 cards in the shadows. <laughs> which that's can a hard be, game. That's it, the hard. well the yeah. more players you have I think it's more difficult okay uh, because uh, when it comes back around to the first player's turn you have to roll dice for each minion Still in left. the lineup mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so if you roll a skull you, it goes into the shadows mm -hmm. right. and then when you have cards that come out they could put cards in the shadows so there's a lot of issues there yeah uh, and then they have some dark secret cards that give you problems you have to do a shocking discovery uh, just love Dark Gothic. It's a great game. That's why it's my number three. Yeah, I knew this was going to be on the list. Yeah, sure. I, I did as well. Um, I have to say, I didn't like it at first, the first time I played it. But since Calvin brings it out, I, it's grown on me. I, I think I, I think I enjoy it a lot. I think it would make my top 50. Um, and then, of course, I always hear him talk about it and mm -hmm. makes me want to play it some more. So. Play it your, you play it with your wife a lot. Yes. I do. I mean, that's the game she wants to play in the evening after we're, we're done working and, and making dinner and all that. Mm -hmm. We go upstairs to the game room and we put it out on the table and she loves playing it. It mm -hmm. just it helps her unwind, I guess. She takes all her frustrations out on the monsters. I, <laughs> I do like it too. It's a, yeah. I mean, I like deck builders and it's hard. Yeah. yeah. Harder than most. For right. Sure. So. Yeah. And, it, and, and I like playing the it competitively, I th and, and I just picked up some supplements for it from Flying Frog, so I'm really excited. Uh, and I had the, the expansion Colonial Horrors, so it's a great game. Mm -hmm. Number three, Dark uh, Gothic. Okay. My number two, is that, I think this is our first crossover. No. Uh oh Yeah, and it's going to be with Kelly. Okay. This is a, a bag building game. Uh, this yeah, is I got the you Wax of Quindling Bird. Okay, yep. Bird? Yeah. Well, I've this, made my five with you. I made that was, my four what, what with you. What number was that? That was number two. I guessed it correctly in order. I knew this was his number two. Yeah, this is just, it's a push your luck game. Yes. And you're like building your bag full of tokens and you're drawing tokens out of the bag and you're like trying not to bust your pot. Your potion, yeah. your potion pot, right? And you, you're drawing tokens out and you can't get more than seven, more than seven cherry mm -hmm. bombs or whatever they're called. They're I cherry bombs. Yeah. 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 And it's just a really fun game because it's different every time. You can yeah. play so many different variations of the spell books, mm -hmm. which are the tokens. Like, and he has the upgraded tokens. Yes, yes, they're very nice. <laughs> I them. He, he loves it's, his upgraded yeah. tokens. It almost made number one. Yeah, but yeah. I like number one more. Oh, I, of course, I think I know your. I think I know your number one. But. I don't think I do, but, but I, yeah, I this, think I missed his number one. And the expansion adds some. 
fun components too. Adds the the witches, and you get the coins. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's a really fun game. Uh, and it's anybody anybody can win. You know, yes. it's not really a lot of. Well, there's a little bit of strategy, but it's just. But it has a nice catch up mechanism where yeah. if you're behind, you get so many rat tails that you can move your mm -hmm. your pot token out. Yes. So you start a, a little earlier to help you catch up. Mm -hmm. So I think it has a nice catch-up mechanism if you fall behind. And what I like about it, too, is it's not one person goes, and then the next person goes, and then the next person goes. You're all drawing out of your bag at the same time. You're all going, and then when you've busted, you know, you're out, or whenever you decide to stop, you're out. So you can look at each other's boards, and you can kind of strategize, but you also it's also very much a push-your-luck kind of thing. But I like that it, you can mitigate... It's, whether you bust or not, because there's yeah. some tokens that let you, if you, the next one you draw is a, is is a, a, a cherry, cherry bomb, bomb, you get to put it back. Yes. Uh -huh. So, uh, it's the yellow ones. And it's, it's so fun, you know, you're digging, you're like, oh, okay, I've got five now. What's the odds of me drawing the three cherry bomb, right? <laughs> yeah. And then you draw it. Yeah. But, but the thing is, is on these games where everybody's doing it at the same time, I have trust issues. So, <laughs> uh, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> not with these guys, but <laughs> other people I play with, not with these yeah, guys. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I like the last round, you all pull it out and you show. Right, yeah. right. Gonna, and the two. Yeah. yeah. So. And as you go along, newer cards come out or whatever, mm -hmm. new potions you can get come out. So it, it's a really good game. I enjoy it. Didn't make my top ten, all right. but I do enjoy it. Mm -hmm. All right, so I guess it's my number two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think you'll both get it, but I don't... I don't think it's gonna be what you think it is. It's Betrayal of the yeah. House on the Hill. Okay, I got it. Um, one of my favorite games. It was the first board game I bought. Um, it was the first board game I watched someone play on YouTube. And it was just one of those games that just draws you in because it's a different story every time. You know, you're putting down tiles, you're trying to collect things, and then there's a traitor in the second part of the game. So at first you're working together, and then at the second part, there's a traitor. So that's what's really cool. Plus you've got the different monsters, you've got the different stories. So I love the trail at House on the Hill. As do I. Yes. <laughs> yes, I love yes. the trail at House on the Hill. Um, it's a great game. Um, it's got 25 different endings to the game. Yeah. If you buy Widow's Walk, the expansion, you get mm -hmm. another 25. Some of the stories in there are wonky. I get it. Mm -hmm. People complain about that. But if you accept the game for what it is, and if you house rule a few things, and everybody's okay <laughs> with it, um, you have an excellent time. It's a mm -hmm. fabulous game. Yeah, it's a fun. It's not on my top ten. Mm -hmm. I think it might be on Calvin's. But yeah, uh, no, it's a fun game. Uh, I like being both the haunt and the investigator. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's both, it's fun to play both sides. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Once the haunt starts, it's, it gets good then. Yeah. Yes. The first part is kind of meandering around the mansion, you know, know, discovering rooms and picking up some items. And some yeah. events may happen, some scary stuff, blood's coming out of the wall, <laughs> you know. It, it's just a great game, and, and it's, I like it. I love both parts, you know. I like collecting the cards. I like getting the... Um, the omens, you know, getting a little companion to follow you around. Um, I like having just a whole lot of items uh, prepared for the, the haunts. So I, I love it. The, the cardboard tokens, you know, are just beautiful. Um, and then you get the figurines. And so I just, I love everything about it. Figurines. Uh, one thing is the clips Miniatures, that you put on sorry. the side. Yeah, yeah the, 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 the clips, clips that you put on the side. But, they, but now if you buy the little expansion, with the dials on the side um, yeah. and the okay. green dials. Okay, yeah, the fancy. It's, yeah, the which uh, I, I have to tell Kyle, thank you for purchasing those for me. I appreciate it. He, he bought them for me, so I appreciate mm -hmm. that. Um, my number two? Yep, Yeah. number two. I think we just discussed it. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's, yes. it's Betrayal at House on the Hill. I did get that one. Um, Betrayal at House on the Hill, like they say, is just fabulous. Um, I, I, I just love the game, and I'm like Kelly. It is one of the first board games I bought when I got back into board gaming. Mm -hmm. I played it in, in a little, they had a board gaming store uh, not too far from me, uh, not the one we go to now, mm -hmm. uh, but it was a different one and this guy had like this big tote of games. And my son was up there playing Magic and the, and the guy goes, hey man, you wanna play a board game? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. So I love board games, so I was all down for it. And he brought out Betrayal House on the Hill and some other folks gathered around and my one of my other sons was with me. 
and we played it. We played it twice, and it was unbelievably good. <laughs> and so I went directly to a store that's no longer in business where we live, and I purchased it and took it home, opened it up, and bagged everything and yes. hugged it, and you know said this is the game for me. So it always have a special place in my heart mm -hmm. uh, because this game got me back into board gaming. Um, not that I was out of it; it was just got mm -hmm. me into modern board games. Right. Right. Yeah. And I think that's what also kind of makes it special for me is it's the first board game I invested in. It's the the first one that I really wanted. And it's just, it's a great starting game to really get into. All right, we're going to go to number one. So Kelly, uh, what do you think uh, Josh's number one is? For Josh, I think it's got to be the crew. I think it's absolutely got to well. be the crew. We play it all the time now. He's always got it out. Um, I, I think that's... Well, um, my yeah. suspicion of your number one was Wingspan. Okay. But I'm going to go ahead and say it's Architects of the West Kingdom. Okay. So my number one is another Stonemaier game. Okay. Kelly's played this, and she likes it. Calvin hasn't played it yet. It's a game of making wine, and that is viticulture. Oh, oh yeah. I had yeah. that on my list, but not as your number one. Yeah, it's... It's just another, it's another point. Yeah. Kind of get the most points game, but it's just, I don't know, it's no stress involved again. Yeah. You're making wine, you're placing your workers out, your grande worker, and mm -hmm. the board is split into four seasons. Yeah. And I, I like the theme of it, even though I don't drink wine, uh, but it's cool to make wine. Sure. Yeah. And the components are great. Stonemaier games again. Mm -hmm. Obviously, three so of the top five. I should say, your list has been stolen by <laughs> basically. I mean, I can't help it. I like their games. Yeah. They're, one of their games, I, you know, Euphoria really got me into board games. Yeah. So, but it's, it didn't make my list. But, um, yeah, it's a fun little worker placement, making wine, getting visitors in your vineyard. Mm -hmm. I will say, wine. it's always hard playing a worker placement game with Josh because you just look down at his board and he's about 20 points ahead of everyone and then you look up and he's 40 or 50 points ahead because he just, he gets it. He understands the concept and, you know, I love playing viticulture with him, but I don't ever anticipate that I'm going to win just because it's, uh, he's got yeah. it. Yeah. Well, I've never played it. I'd give it a try. I've never played it. You know, I'm not a big worker placement guy. Mm -hmm. But I'll try it because, you know what, I like playing board games and it doesn't matter if I win or lose. Yeah. It's about the experience of playing the game. It's fun because the spots on the board, you know, you can only, they're split in the season. So, the, you know, mm -hmm. you got spring, summer, fall, and winter. So, like we do. Yeah, well, yeah. Like in, <laughs> yeah, like in I'm real just life. kidding. Like in real life. <laughs> but, like, on the spots on the board, you know, if you go in the center spot, you get yeah. an extra coin if you go there. Oh, so, cool. if you're the first person to go there, mm -hmm. you get an extra coin, which I think is cool. Um and you have your grande worker, which lets you go to a spot, even if it's taken by someone else. Oh, okay. Which is okay. Nice. So you used to bully them around, is what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. And you know, you're gonna you're building structures to upgrade your vineyard, and you're, yeah. you know, you're uh, growing more wine, you're aging your wine. Mm -hmm. and well, I'm willing to give it a try. All you just bring it up. Yeah. And, and I mean, I I really enjoy it. I enjoy it too. It's I'm not a worker placement fan, which is why it's not on my top ten. Um, but I I do really enjoy it. And Josh, would you like to guess Kelly? Number well, one. okay, so at first I had Search for Planet X. Yeah. And then when that got taken, I'm like, okay, Betrayal. But then yeah. she just said it. So now, my number one for you is going to be um, Deception, Murder, and Hong Kong. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I'd your... say that too, yes. You're... It's not. It is Shadows Over Camelot. I had, I had that on the list. I no love, way. I love Shadows Over Camelot. Calvin doesn't bring it out enough. I could play it. <laughs> wait a minute, so wait, 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 wait. Let's stop right there. <laughs> Calvin has brought this game two or three times and we've only had about four people there. Yes. And she doesn't want to play it because she wants to play it with more people. I get that, but you can play it with three. So you know it's, but. we the the one time I played it, uh we had eight players, I think, which is how yeah. many uh you had all of the knights of you know the round table and a king arthur character and i'm such a fan of the king arthur mythology and wow. everything about that i love you know the hidden roles um i i like how it's you're, you're fighting for the kingdom you know and um you get to play as the knights um and i just i love it so much i would play oh, it i didn't I know you liked it that much 
You're shocked? Yes. I'm shocked because Speechless. Deception was not on yes. the list at all. Uh, Deception yeah. is one of my honorable mentions, but I, I played a lot of games in the past couple of months oh. that just, just beat it out. Um, but Deception was, I think, the third board game that I that I picked up. So good. Or it's you crossed good. off Cockroach Poker. I did. Yes. No, yeah. I crossed off Cockroach Poker to put Deception. It. Yeah, Deception. Deception, yeah. Like, good gravy. And that was my fault. I accidentally said the word Deception at lunch, and both of their <laughs> eyes just lit up. And they both said, oh, no. Uh, we forgot that one. <laughs> yes. Uh, anybody got a wild guess on mine? Well, I, I kind of thought it was going to be Dark Gothic, and then I kind of thought it was going to be Betrayal. Hmm. Um, I kind of want to say Black Orchestra. Okay. I have, see, I put that on... Okay, so the one I thought was going to be in the one was Betrayal. Mm -hmm. But it's number two. Yeah. So I'm going to go... I know you like hard games, hard cooperative games. So I'm going to say Robinson Crusoe. <laughs> Both of those are great picks. And, and probably Robinson Crusoe and... Um, Black Orchestra. Black Orchestra, Orchestra would have been on my top ten. Mm -hmm. But... I don't get to play Robinson Crusoe enough. Mm -hmm. um, I love the game. It's a fabulous game. And I, I like it a lot. But it's just that it doesn't come to the table very much. Mm -hmm. and so it kind of gets lost in the background. Um, and then Black Orchestra is so new. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I've only played it two or three times. So, yeah. But it is good. It probably jump up there. Because <laughs> I really, really enjoy it. You're trying to kill Hitler's fabulous game. But anyway, my number one is Legends of Andor. Oh. I totally forgot about that game. Legends of Andor is a cooperative game. You're trying to save the the kingdom, mm -hmm. and you have to, you you can't just go kill everything because mm -hmm. it speeds the track up. So you yeah. wanna you wanna balance what you're killing to where you're at. And every now, a Prince Reginald will come and help. Mm -hmm. And the card driven story is just it's just phenomenal. It's a great game. It is a really fun game. We played. I played it once. Right. Me and you and Kyle played it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think I've played it yet. It it's is, a hard game. It's hard. Mm -hmm. It's very hard. And I just chose the wrong hard cooperative game. Right. You <laughs> did. Well, you know, I'm a big fan of cooperative games. Yes. yes. You guys know that. And I love uh, Ameritrash. Yeah. I love that go fight kind of style like yeah. horror games. So, um, it, and I like card games and stuff too. Don't get me wrong. But if it's my if it's in my top ten, it's a great game for cooperative or, or Ameritrash game. So, hopefully you guys so, liked our top ten we got. Uh, I was just going to say, I had some honorable mentions. If right, you I'll let you go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> uh, quite a few, but I'll just name them off real quick. So, I had Magic the Gathering. Uh -huh. Which, okay. that got me into, which I knew, I had the crew. Uh -huh. Yeah. I had Room 25. Right. Marco Polo. Right. Uh, Splendor. Azul knocks Splendor off, because I like Azul better. Uh, Not Alone. Not but, Alone, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. Deception. Yeah. Dead of Winter, uh, Shards of Infinity, which is Shards of Infinity, and then like Grand Austria Hotel. Mm -hmm. Those are my honorable. Yeah, and see, I want to play Grand Austria Hotel at some point. But anyway, guys, if you want to see more videos with these guys in it, uh, comment below that you'd like to see that, and hey, make some suggestions of what top ten or top five board games you'd like us to do. Uh, the top tens get a little long, but if you want to do a top five, we'll be glad to do a top five of whatever you'd like to know about. Um, but thanks for watching. I appreciate you guys for being here doing this. Uh, remember, get a board game to the table. Spend time with friends and family. And thanks for watching Calvin's Guy Game. Remember to subscribe and click that bell for alerts when new videos come out.